Hi everyone, this video is um, relating to moving to France and the buying process, buying a house. So I'm just going to read through my diary because I wrote a few little tips down for me to remember and it will just give you like a little summary of what I'm going to be talking about. Um, so I'm going to be talking about uh, the time span it takes for buying a house which is really different to in the UK. Um, also how things can get much more complicated over here um, and how things can elongate. Um, yeah. Number three, um, how working with solicitors is really different and your immobilier, which is your estate agent. Um, the costs of your estate agents here is really different. Uh, how um, here they don't analyse the house and its surroundings as they do in England. They don't do that kind of survey. And I'll talk more about that. Um, yeah, so here we go. So for us, it took us, it should have taken six weeks for buying our house. Um, from signing the bit of paper at the beginning um, that we wanted to be in on this contract and and that, you know, we really wanted this house and we wouldn't, you could still back out at that stage after the first signing, um, but we knew that we wouldn't because once we've made a decision, we're going to go for it. Um, um, it could have been six weeks and now it took a little bit longer. I think it took seven or eight in the end, um, just because um, there was an issue right at the end of just before moving in um, that they, they hadn't got rid of all of their... Um, belongings from the house and from our kind of funny metal shed that we've got, Robin's art atelier. Um, and so we're like, hang on a minute, we're not moving in and taking the keys and saying that it's complete, completely ours before you've totally moved out. Um, so we had to kind of push our estate agent to, to, to make that happen. Um, and because um, it was an old lady that owned the house, uh, it was her family that were kind of helping the selling process. So there was kind of four parties. There was her and her three, uh, one son and two daughters. And they were kind of organising it between themselves um, to empty the house and to help with the house sale. Um, and the lady that was in charge of getting rid of everything um, was not being particularly helpful to the rest of the family. And it was kind of getting in the way of things a bit. Um, but our immobilier was great and um, kind of sorted that out as quickly as he could. Um, how things can get more complicated and long. So um, I will go, I'm going to relate this to a friend of mine who's um, still in the process of buying a house. Um, and uh, she doesn't know how long it's going to take. Uh, basically because um, there's something in the sale of that house it's on the market it's for sale um, but it means that basically this woman um, who's still alive she's very old um, but she likes to come to the house for two weeks a year in the summer she hasn't been to the house for the last two years because she's ill um, but she still has a right over the house um, so this means that um, you know my friends this family that want to buy it um, can't move in and can't buy it fully until that is kind of sorted out. So they're almost waiting for this woman to basically die. <laughs> I know that sounds terrible, but it's often like that in France. Um, and there is another whole separate buying process where you buy the house when the people are still alive and they still live in the house, um, which is a bit crazy. So we kind of made sure that we stayed away from that kind of... Um, that kind of setup and scenario. We didn't choose houses that had that on them because we knew we wanted to to, to move in soon and we, we wanted the process to, to be quick for us. Um, so yeah, that's a bit crazy. So, so at the moment, I think it's been about a year and a half for that family for wanting to buy that house. So they had to buy something else in the meantime, um, but it could take another half year. It could take another year or two. They don't know. Um, so, yeah, that's how things can be a bit unknown and stretch out. So be aware of that um, when you first start the buying process and, and you're thinking about which house to put an offer on. Do you really want all of this baggage or do you want it to happen quickly? <laughs> uh, 
Um, so the solicitors. Um, so in England, when we bought our flat, for example, um, we used the solicitors that were up north, Manahol Law. I would not suggest them to anyone. They're this huge company and um, absolute nightmare to work with them. I liked all the kind of internet thing, um, but on the other hand, you never spoke to the same solicitor every time every time you rang up. They kind of just looked at your case online and kind of helped you from that. Um, but it was an absolute nightmare, I hated it. Whereas here, um, you choose your solicitor and um, when it comes to further down the line with doing your signings, um, the, you're there, the solicitor's there, uh, we had our estate agent there and we had all the people that were selling the house in the room as well. So there was three, four, five, six, seven, eight of us because my daughter was there as well. And then sometimes we'd had nine of us because the solicitor needed um, one of his um, helpers in there to, to kind of um, help him with paperwork and various things that she'd she'd been part of the process. So yeah, that's an awful lot of people in the room. Um, we also had a projector screen, project up his um, his computer screen so that we could all read and see um, what we were going through and, and talking about stage by stage. And and the, um, the solicitor would sometimes um, translate things when we didn't understand fully some of the terminology. Um, but yeah, they talk about your history, they talk about your married life, they talk about all sorts of things at the beginning, which they wouldn't do um, in England. And they talk about where you're from, where you're born, all this stuff.